Was this the right time to do that? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think, um, you know, Undertaker, I always thought, had a pretty good gauge on what he needed to do next when it was time to change his look, when it was time to, you know, I've always um, respected and admired how he's kind of evolved. Um, it wasn't an easy gimmick to pull off, you know, and I remember when uh, Undertaker worked with me the very first time, and I, I worked with him a couple of times when I was Intercontinental Champion and things like that, and we had that Hitman versus Frankenstein kind of match, and well, you know, it, it was easy to work with and fun to work with. And uh, but uh, when I became champion, I remember when they finally said, "Okay, you're working with Undertaker," and I was like, I was thinking like, you know, he was always fun to work with, but it's like I don't know how to work. I could the Hitman champion wrestler kind of the gimmick I got now is not really going to pull off this Frankenstein stuff very well, as well as uh, mm -hmm. I'll do my best kind of thing, but it's I'm not quite sure how far to go with it and uh, I remember it was Undertaker that came to me and said I'm so happy I'm so excited that I'm actually getting to work with you and I was kind of surprised that he was so excited about working with me he goes I can finally show everybody mm -hmm. that I can work that I can really wrestle you know I can actually do stuff and you can and I think the great matches that I had with Undertaker were more of a I think he had more to do with him than I did in the sense that he knew how to make me bring up the wrestling, which is what he really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And we had such good matches. I mean, I can't, you know, as far as actually working with somebody, I don't know of any of the wrestlers I ever worked with that were as fun and smooth to work with as Undertaker. He was a total pro. In the hands of a lesser man, a gimmick like that could be really one of the laughable ones in history. I don't know anybody else that could have pulled it off. Yeah. He had to be, he was the gimmick. He was the undertaker. He yeah. was, he was, there's always a bit of the real character in the real wrestler. And um, in Undertaker's case, I know he wasn't Frankenstein. He wasn't a goth or, you know, he wasn't into a lot of that stuff that he, you know, you know, but he, I know right, must have been right from the first day that uh, Vince brought him in and they talked about it and uh, sort of the, foreseeing where we was going to go with it and what he had in mind. I, uh, I, I applaud Undertaker. He did a great job of masterminding that gimmick. He did a great job. There's the uh, Larry King Live appearance. There's a Donahue show. Um, the reaction, are you just, is it kind of like an audible groan in the locker room, like now, now this? Especially for you, this is your <laughs> ascension and more ridiculousness. Well, I think a lot of us were just worried about the whole state of the business at that time. Um, it did come right after the Hogan steroid thing right. and all that was, a, that was, that was a kind of a black guy, I think. And then this was a totally different thing and it was, there was, I think it was one of those things that was um, incited from from talk. You know, like it, it, it came from the initial, I mean, there was wrongdoing with Terry Garvin and, uh, and Mal Phillips and maybe some of these other guys. I don't know what happened. It's like it came down to it was like, what, did, what, did you, what do you know? It's like, well, I don't know anything. What goes on behind some door? I, I got no idea what to, they're doing in there. You know, or, you know, if they're, you know, fraternizing with them in the in the bar and stuff. I I don't know what they're doing. So you hadn't seen anything that would be categorized and, and as nobody, misconduct. And nobody did. I don't think. You know, very few guys. I think that's why they. That well, I'm not sure there there was a settlement in that case. But in a lot of cases, like where the where the FBI was trying to, you know, put their claws into Vince and really, um, you know, send him to jail for a long time. And I remember Vince was there was a big concern about it. But, in the end, it was just a lot of talk, as wrestlers were saying that Vince was say, selling steroids, when Vince clearly never ever sold steroids and was never doing anything like that, never needed to, never, never happened. But the, 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 the wrestlers had conjured up a lot of this talk, and all this talk had been, was out there. So there was a lot of stuff that was being verified by wrestlers with no real evidence. Just because they'd heard it. Yeah, and then same with the ring crew, I think Honky Tonk is an example was talking about uh, a lot of the 
abuse that was going on to these young ring boys. And you know what? Uh, I don't know what Honky Tonk saw, and I don't doubt that there was some some shenanigans going on there. There should have been, um, you know, some kind of oversight anyway. But uh, you know, as for what I ever saw, and for any wrestlers that I know that I've ever talked with, there was nobody. Nobody saw anything because nobody went to those rooms with those guys, and nobody did anything. It was like they were on their own. Was this the right time to do that? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think, um, you know, Undertaker, I always thought, had a pretty good gauge on what he needed to do next when it was time to change his look, when it was time to, you know, I've always um, respected and admired how he's kind of evolved. Um, it wasn't an easy gimmick to pull off, you know, and. I remember when uh, Undertaker worked with me the very first time, and I, I worked with him a couple of times when I was Intercontinental Champion and things like that. And we had that Hitman versus Frankenstein kind of match, and well, you know, it, it was easy to work with and fun to work with. And uh, but uh, when I became champion, I remember when they finally said, "Okay, you're working with Undertaker," and I was like, I was thinking like, you know, he was always fun to work with, but it's like I don't know how to work. I could the Hitman Champion wrestler kind of the gimmick I got now was not really going to pull off this Frankenstein stuff very well, as well as uh, mm -hmm. I'll do my best kind of thing, but it's, I'm not quite sure how far to go with it. And uh, I remember it was Undertaker that came to me and said, I'm so happy, I'm so excited that I'm actually getting to work with you. And I was kind of surprised that he was so excited about working with me. He goes, I can finally show everybody mm -hmm. that I can work, that I can really wrestle, you know, I can actually do stuff and you can, and I think the great matches that I had with Undertaker were more of a, I think he had more to do with them than I did in the sense that he knew how to make me bring up the wrestling, which is what he really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And we had such good matches. I mean, I can't, you know, as far as actually working with somebody, I don't know of any of the wrestlers I ever worked with that were as fun and smooth to work with as Undertaker. He was a total pro. In the hands of a lesser man, a gimmick like that could be really one of the laughable ones in history. I don't know.